In this video, I'll be going through the main features of Motionix iRotor Balancer app. It's an iPad app that connects to Motionix 2-channel wired rotor balancing kit for single-plane and two-plane balancing. First, let's take a look at single-plane balancing using the four-run method. This only requires one-channel acceleration input. By placing a trial weight at different locations on the rotor and taking measurements from the accelerometer, the proper correction weight and end goal can be calculated to balance the rotor. The top section of the app page is for the balancing process. The user can enter vibration amplitude directly into the text fields, or press the Get button to capture the reading from the accelerometer. The trial weight can be entered directly, or you can use an estimation tool to calculate a proper trial weight value. Get vibration readings at different locations, one by one, and press the Correction Weight button to compute correction weight. The Camera Lens button opens the camera view, which overlays the red target icon on a circle. Point the camera at your rotor and align the rotor edge with the circle. The position of the red target icon is where you should place the correction weight on the rotor. This tool is helpful for quickly finding the correction weight location if there are no angle markings on the rotor. If adding weight is not a viable option and removing material is needed instead, the user can use the removal weight calculator. When it's loaded, it automatically calculates removal weight and hole location based on correction weight information. It calculates drill length if drill diameter is known, or the other way around. On the bottom is a selector to select materials, including copper, lead, steel, stainless steel, and other common metals. The bottom section of the app page shows a real-time signal viewer. It continuously updates the vibration signal in time wave form, or FFT spectrum. Acceleration signals from the accelerometer are used directly for analysis, or integrated to velocity. You can use two fingers to pinch to a specific frequency range. There's a peak marker in the FFT spectrum. When it is set to auto mode, the app automatically detects a high peak and sets a marker there. When it is set to manual mode, the marker will follow your touch on the signal viewer and adjust its position. Vibration information, including frequency and RMS value, are displayed on the top right corner of the viewer. Data acquisition can be paused by pressing the pause button on the viewer. Other tools available include a polar plot, which shows trial and correction weight positions and vibrations. It's a good tool for visualization and verification. There's a permissible residual and balance calculator converted from the ISO 1940 chart. The user can enter rotor speed, mass, and number of balancing planes, and select a proper balancing grade to calculate the permissible residual and balance value and quickly assess balancing quality. Another helpful tool is the weight angular split calculator. When the calculated correction weight position is not accessible on the rotor, the user can use this calculator to split the weight and distribute them to two weights at other accessible locations. Once balancing is complete, a test report can be generated. On the top of the report, the user can enter general information, such as report title, date and time, staff name, machine, and plant. A company logo can be added to the report, either from the camera or photo library. Similarly, machine images can also be attached. The middle part of the report shows balancing parameters and vibration before and after balancing, and includes an option to attach vibration spectra to the report. The bottom section has several fields for adding notes, signatures, and maps. After editing, you can press the View Report button to read the generated PDF report. There are options to share the report via email, wireless printing, or saving the local report manager. Next, let's move to single-plane balancing using the vector method. Unlike the four-run method, this method requires two-channel input, one for vibration from the accelerometer, the other for phase from the laser tachometer. The app simultaneously collects signals from both channels and computes vibration amplitude and phase, as can be seen from the signal viewer. 1x phase and TAC RPM are also displayed. I don't have the hardware connected, so the value is zero. With the phase information, balancing can be completed with two rounds. In the first round, the user presses the first Get button to measure original vibration and phase. After the trial weight is added, the user presses the second Get button to measure vibration with the trial weight. The correction weight and position can then be determined. After removing the trial weight and adding the correction weight, the user can press the Set Get button to capture vibration after correction to verify the result. Trim weights can be added if further refinement is needed. Similar to the forerun method, a PDF report can be generated and saved after the test. 
Our rotor balancer also supports two-plane balancing. For inbound cases, three rounds are required. In the first round, the original vibration amplitude and phase of the two planes are measured separately. In the second round, a trial weight is added to plane one, and the user captures vibration on the two planes. In the third round, vibrations are recorded as the trial weight is moved to plane two. Finally, correction weights are calculated, and the fourth round can be taken to verify the balancing result. Trim weight can be added if further refinement is needed. A PDF report can be generated and saved afterward. For overhung balancing, two phases of balancing are conducted. The first phase is to find the static correction weight on the inner plane, and the accelerometer is placed on the inner bearing support. Similar to single plane balancing with two channels, the user captures the original vibration, adds a trial weight to measure vibration with the trial weight, and then calculates the correction weight on the inner plane. Next, for the second phase to find the couple correction weight, the accelerometer is moved to the outer bearing support to capture the original vibration. Trial weight with the same value, but with a 180 degree position shift, are placed on the two planes. Vibration with the trial weight is taken, and finally, the couple correction weight can be calculated and added to the two planes. A PDF report can be generated and saved afterwards. Next, we'll revisit all the test reports we saved from the report manager. It is organized in the plant, machine, report structure. The user can easily locate a specific test report. Once the report is selected, a pin drops on the map to show where the balancing work was conducted, and the PDF test report is displayed in the report view. You can use the full screen button to expand the report to the full page. You can share the report via email or wireless printing. To delete a plant, machine, or report, simply slide the selector row to the left. Let's go back and check the setting options in the app. Here, you can select metric or imperial units and CPM or hertz for frequency units. The default vibration measurement parameter can be set to velocity, acceleration, or displacement. There are also some spectrum settings, including FFT resolution and line thickness. Additionally, you can choose a dark or white theme for the app, and the background and text color will adjust accordingly. Finally, overall RMS or 1x peak can be selected as the calibration reference. iRotor Balancer has a separate page for easy calibration. If you have a 1G 159Hz shaker, you can connect it to the accelerometer, as illustrated, and simply tap a button to calibrate the system. If you do not have a shaker, our hardware devices ship with their calibration number, which can be entered here. Here is a separate page to check two channel inputs. The signal viewer is similar to the one available in the balancing pages, with additional options, including channel selection, changing points for averaging, quick frequency range selection, on and off options for two channel phase difference, changing line thickness, and adjusting frequency units. If you need any help, there is a help page in the app to explain general buttons and features, as well as instructions for different balancing methods. For further information, please visit www.motionix.com.